Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Todd Gober with Step by Step Golf coming to you with episode four of At the Turn. Um, today's episode is entitled The Caddy Factor, and I am pleased to have a good friend uh, joining us today. Uh, we've only known each other about a year, but I feel like I've known him for a long, long time. He's a great friend of the ministry, and we've really gotten to know each other over the last uh, year or so. Coach Derek Gargis, a legend high school golf coach in North Alabama uh, from Muscle Shoals High School, who is now retired, uh, is our guest today. And I am so glad to have Coach Gargas with us today. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate you joining us today. Thanks, Todd. Looking forward to this. Hey, if you would, um, I'd love for you to give the audience just a little bit of background. Talk about your teaching days. Talk about your coaching days a little bit and specifically um, the success you had as a golf coach. Sure. Um, I had aspirations like a lot of kids growing up. I, you know, I wanted to be a coach, but um, I, I knew that teaching and coaching sometimes didn't work out like you always wanted it to, but I was fortunate that I was able to get a degree and uh, taught in a middle school here in, in, in Muscle Shoals and was able to teach in our middle school and coach in our high school, which is a block away. And I coached a lot of different sports over a 30-year career and coached football for 17 years, basketball for 20 years. Uh, had a stint in softball and a short stint in cross country and uh, had golf also for 23 years. And for the last, uh, the last 11 years, I had nothing but golf. And, um, but had a, had a, a lot of fun over the, the 30 year career and feel like that even through a lot of my mistakes, I feel like that I made a somewhat of a contribution to the, my career and it made a great contribution back to me. So I, I enjoyed every minute of it. Well, I know you had a lot of success, especially the last few years. You had a great run of state championships, as I recall, with both uh, your boys' team and your girls' team. Is that right? That's right. Um, when I first took over the golf program, uh, like I said, about 23 years ago, there were about I had about two boys, and that was it. And uh, had some boys to borrow some clubs so we would have enough players to have a team, and we were bad. You know, the kids knew we were bad, but – uh, they also knew that they were building up the groundwork for what we were going to try to do. And uh, so we were bad for a while because most boys in Muscle Shoals were going to pl play Major League Baseball. We have a great golf course here, but it just took a long time for golf to take off. And actually the girls, the girls program did take off before the boys. I got some girls playing and then um, girls became interested. And I had some pretty good athletes um, in the girls program and the girls won state championships in 13 and 14 and the boys became a little jealous then so they started getting a little more fire in their the blood about being competitive and playing year round and so um the boys won in 17 18 and 19 and the girls also won in 17 and 18 so yeah we had a a great run there and it was just because it became important it became important to a bunch of kids and uh, instead of playing golf just during golf season, they played golf year round. And it, it, it you know, kind of one of those cliches that success breeds success. Yep. That's exactly what happened. Gotcha. And, you know, they were just great players, great players that challenged each other, and that made our program better. That's awesome. So one of the reasons I thought about you, you know, I mentioned earlier the, the title of this episode is The Caddy Factor. Um, is that, as I understand it, in high school golf, as, as the head coach of a high school golf team, uh, you are able to uh, talk with the players between greens and tee boxes, probably not during the hole, but between greens and tee boxes, and in a way sort of serve kind of like a caddy would do to, to give little bits of information or a pep talk here or there kind of in between holes. It, t tell me more about maybe kind of that role that you played as a coach but, but kind of as a, as a caddy as well in between holes. That's exactly right. I felt like most of my job as a coach with this high school was, most of my job was done well before we were in a competition. My job was more of uh, teaching them course management, teaching them uh, how to manage emotions, uh, how to actually uh, have a game plan before they got to a golf course. We, you know, and of course, everything that I taught them or everything that I talked to them about was, was things that I learned from other people and learned from uh, reading and learned from uh, over, over the course of me growing up. I talked to them a lot of time. One of the strategies we used at the, on the golf course was 
Uh, and I think this was a great strategy, and I learned this from other coaches. The way to map out a golf course is, uh, or one of the ways, is to par the par threes, par the par fours, and birdie the par fives. And you shoot four under. And my kids kind of, they bought into these things. And over a course of time, they started really believing in these little bitty things that we talked about. But you're right, during the during this competition, I couldn't talk to them during a hole. I could only talk to them between holes. But so most of my job during the competition was to manage emotions and try to keep them grounded. And, uh, you know, kids have a tendency to, to expect way too much of themselves or sometimes to think maybe they're better than they really think they are. And I had to keep them grounded and say, hey, settle, settle. Just, you know, I want you to have high expectations, but I don't want you to expect too much of yourself. So yeah. it, it, was, it was a lot of managing emotions. And, uh, you know, you said keeping them grounded. That's that's another reason why I think I thought of you for this particular episode. I, I know you are a man of faith. I know you are a man of character. Um, I know that um, you instilled those characteristics, trust, you know, integrity. It's such a, one of the reasons why golf is such a great game. We call our own penalties, um, play by the rules, all those kind of things. So I'm sure you had opportunities to not only caddy, or coach, you know, your players on the golf course, but also off the golf course as well. Could you, do you have a, a cool story or, or a memory about being sort of a caddy off the golf course as well? Well, my kids have definitely seen the good sides of me and they've seen the bad sides <laughs> of me. Uh, I, and I think that's really important. I think it was important to them to, to know that, that I am, just because I'm a Christian doesn't make me sinless that I, I'm a sinner saved by God's grace and nothing more than that. And just because we're Christians doesn't make us spotless. It's just that we're forgiven. And so they saw the good and bad in me all the time. And, uh, I never, ever, ever tried to, uh, wave a Bible in my kid's face. Um, they did hear me say often, I, I hope that most of my players, especially over the last 20 years of my career. I hope that most of them could tell you, oh, yeah, we heard Coach Gargas talk about John 13, 35. That says, by this, all men will know that you're my disciples, that you love one another. I told them all the time, I, I'm, I'm not a Bible scholar. I will never profess to be that. But I try day in and day out to live a life that loves other people. And it, over a period of time, eventually someone will say, you know, there's something different about you. And that's, that's when the door opens. And some people may disagree with that, but I just try to live um, and, and try to love other people enough that with the love of Jesus that they eventually say, I, I want to know what's different. And so I wanted my kids to know that. And we talked about that a lot, even in a public school. It's, you know, it, I was never called in on the carpet about sharing my faith then that way, but that, that's what I wanted my kids to get. And we talked wow. about it a lot. We had, we were at my house a lot doing, whether we were cooking hot dogs or hamburgers on the back patio, but we did things like that off the course a lot. Hmm. You know, I thought, I thought of you this morning. Um, I heard an interview on ESPN radio with Indiana's head football coach. Uh, as you probably know, in Indiana is now three and O they beat Michigan yesterday. They beat Penn state a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. The question was posed uh, to him about what's made them different or what's brought him to, to the point of where the team is doing what they're doing. And he, he talked a lot about his, his faith, being a man of faith. And he said, he made one statement. He said, you know, you got to remember, he said, I care a lot more about the players uh, as people rather than players. In other words, I care about them as people first. Uh, and I thought about you. I think that's that probably if I, if, I, if I interviewed or talked with many of your players, I bet they would say that about you. I know you're a, a, a humble guy, but you probably agree with that statement. I would guess that probably describes your philosophy. Well, I, I hope they would say that. I also, I also know that I'm a, I, I also know that I'm a very, very, very fierce competitor. Sometimes too, too, sometimes that gets the best of me. You know, I, uh, you and I have known each other, like you said, for about a year now, and we haven't seen each other in that realm yet, but I, sometimes I, I go a little bit over and I, and I have to reel myself back in. Uh, especially when it comes to my own son, you know, I, I have to keep, it's hard to keep that balance, but yes, when it, at the end of the day, 
when when the dust settles, I do think that my I, I would hope that my players did realize that yeah when when the heat of the battle ended and we were able to recompose ourselves that yeah I was able to look at the big picture. Yeah. Again, not not always in the heat of battle. Uh, you know, sometimes it, it did. I, I would always tell them if I'm playing checkers with my grandmother, I'm really trying to beat her. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was it's one of those things where. Yeah. I, it's, it's, I don't know, some people aren't like that and some people are. And I sometimes I couldn't control that as well as I wanted to. I got you. Well, um, you know, these are great examples why, again, I thought of you for this caddy factor episode of not only what you were able to do for your players as a caddy on the course, but for your players off the course as well. My guess is uh, throughout your life, you've probably had someone that did that for you. Um, could you talk a, a little bit about maybe a person or, or the people that, that served as a caddy to you and how that impacted your life? Oh, there, there, have been, there have been many, but one absolutely comes to mind. Uh, I'll try to make a long story short. When I was about 17, I lived with my grandparents. And um, in the spring of my senior year of high school, the phone rang one morning and my grandmother came to me and said, hey, there's a Mr. Wheelis on the phone. And I knew this person from church, but I didn't know him well. I just knew who he was. He had a family and kids. I, I knew them. And he asked if I had a base, baseball game that day. And I said, yes, sir, I do. And he came to the baseball game and I pitched that afternoon. And when the game was over, he hung around and uh, talked to me after and gave me some money and told me to go to McDonald's to get me something to eat. And I never, I had no idea really what was going on. And from that day until now, I'm 52 years old now. From that day until now, Sid Wheelis is still like my dad and my best friend and my brother all wrapped into one. And I get emotional talking about this mm. when it comes up. But uh, he's, he still treats my son now like he's part of, like he's his own grandson. And, um, Several years back, I would say within the last 10 years, I asked Sid one day, we were playing golf, and I said, Sid, do you remember calling my house that day all those years ago? And he said, I do. And now, Sid is a Vietnam veteran who is a, a man's man. He doesn't show emotion very much. And I asked him, you remember that? And he said, yeah, I, I remember. And I said, why, why did you call that day? Why? And, and he got quiet and got a little bit emotional, and he said, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why I picked up the phone and called you that day, but I'm glad I did. <laughs> and so it, it was a God thing. And I told him, Sid, you called me that day and you stepped into my life when I was about to make some really bad decisions. And, and, and you mentored me all these years. You were important to me then. You were important to me later. You're important to me now. And you stepped in and you're important to Sam. And my family, and you, you, and you really have been like a dad and a brother and a best friend all these years. And, and that was a God thing. God did that. We, we, we will never be able to understand. And it's funny that we're talking about the caddy factor. Sid is the most avid golfer I have ever known in my life. He plays golf. I, I, he, if there were 12 days in a week, he'd play 12 days a week. He's a Christian man, but he is the most avid golfer I've ever known. He taught me everything I know about golf. But he stepped in as, a, as he he was he was my golf. He taught me everything I know about golf, and he was also very very vital in guiding me outside of golf too. Wow. Well, your message today is a perfect uh, message for for the title of the Caddy Factor. I want to encourage those that are that are uh, that will watch this in the future to think of a couple of different things uh, based on Coach Gargas's message. You know, the first is 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 to think about the people in your life that have influenced you, that maybe have been a caddy to you and have helped to guide your life and to think about your appreciation of those people. Maybe even reach out and express your appreciation to those people. But um, also, I want to encourage people watching this to think about how can they pass that on and how can they be a caddy, so to speak, to someone else, just like Coach Gargas has done through his teaching and his coaching years. And let's be encouraged by that, to not only give thanks and appreciation to the people that have been a caddy to us, but to think about who we have in our life that we can 
do that for as well. You know, who, who in the world today would, would say that about you, about us, you know, those of you watching this, that, that you are their caddy or their mentor and challenge yourself to, to think about who those people may be. I do want to close with a, with a scripture. One of my favorite um, verses uh, is Romans 12 too. Uh, we've I've been thankful to have um, tied in a scripture in all of these dip different episodes in weeks past. And today I want to read uh, Romans 12 too, which says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The reason I chose that scripture for today is because I can say personally that um, when, when I have applied that in my life, when I have been transformed the most, it has been as the result of someone coming alongside of me, someone investing in me and engaging with me uh, that has really opened my eyes to certain things. And, and uh, my thought pattern, my behaviors, um, my spiritual walk has been the most changed and the most uh, growth as a result of someone investing in me. So I thought that tied in well to the theme today for the Caddy Factor and certainly coach um, uh, your, um, testimony of how Sid Wheelis invested in you, but how you have also spent your career uh, passing that along to, to other folks. Any, uh, any closing thoughts, Coach, or anything else to share with the audience before we close out today? No, I just think, you know, I'm going to go back to what I said about my kids. I think it's important that uh, one of the things I said is that my kids saw me at my worst and at my best. You know, I think it's important that they – they, I, I think that's important that the kids saw that in me. They didn't. They didn't see just one mm -hmm. uh, facade. They they saw me at my best and my worst, and they know that I'm. That I think it's important that we're real. That's a great point. That's a great point. Well, thanks uh, everyone for joining in to today's episode. I hope it's been an encouraging word to you um, to not only think and and uh, thank those people that have invested in you, but to also identify who those people in your life may be that you could caddy or coach along the way. So uh, coach, thanks again for your time uh, and your support of our ministry. We appreciate that very much. And this has been episode four, The Caddy Factor. Thank you.